Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I bring to you a variation on SLS that I don't think I've done before. I've done many things to SLS, but I don't think I've slapped two New Glenn boosters on the side of it. And there are very good reasons for that. For instance, if we take a look at the sea level thrust to weight ratio, it's not great. It's 1.17, so that's a little bit weak. And that is because New Glenn, the core, is of course configured as a first stage. It is not meant to be a booster. It doesn't have the thrust weight, intrinsic thrust weight ratio of SLS's normal boosters. Uh, but it does have the same kind of thrust. It just has more fuel built into it, right? It's much larger. And so it has a lot more capacity compared to the normal boosters on SLS. Uh, we could underfuel it and then get more sea level thrust weight ratio, but we'll try this out for now and we will we'll assume that we're going to try to recover it on a barge. So we're going to let them run for three minutes and uh, the other 18 seconds will be left as the landing fuel, uh, which should be generous. Uh, otherwise, we're of course going to be running the RS-25s, so the regular RS-25s at the bottom of SLS and we will see whether this is beneficial or not, but it's tough to say, right? First of all, uh, MechJeb is not helping me out here because it's not even reading the upper stage, the EUS. We do have an EUS up here, and uh, it is unlocked. It's, it's not locked or anything, so I'm not entirely sure why it's not seeing the EUS. Our payload right now is just a 45-ton payload for the moon. And so we are trying to get 45 tons to the moon, which will be higher than the current capacity of SLS with the Block 1B, uh, but not by that much. It would just be matching uh, Saturn V, so it's not a huge improvement. But yeah, there, there are a lot of reasons I haven't done this before. Uh, the main thing is that I used to use initially the Raptor 9 boosters on SLS, and that's better because that's uh, those were lighter and meant to be boosters. I designed them that way and uh, so they didn't have as much duration and they were tighter uh, so the tankage mass was less and you know raptors can fit into a smaller circumference though actually there's a lot of room on new glenn for these engines i don't know if they have a larger nozzles than i expected or not but anyway we have the be9s here of course and these are the stats roughly speaking i don't know if uh, how correct they are they were what they seem to be a while ago, but they have developed since, and I don't have updated numbers. So if you think that the numbers are different for the BE4s, uh, by all means tell me. But way back when, when I made this model, and this is actually an old rocket that I made, one of the early ones that I made. So it's been many years since I uh, tried to figure out the numbers. I don't know why there's two, en actually I do know why there's two engine configurations. It's not gonna cause any problems. Okay, I think I've figured out what the problem was this is apparently the ICPS liquid hydrogen tank, so that's why we're not reading the delta V. We need the oxygen tank. Okay, okay, now we've got 15 minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, this is the mob by Sobel for the space launch system, so if you were wondering, that is it. So, okay, now we are reading the delta V, and it shows 12,871. Now, we're going to be reserving 18 seconds of propellant for in the New Glenn for their recovery. So that's got cut into it. And our thrust weight ratio is now 1.14, which is going to cut into it. So can we reserve 3,100 to 3,000, really 3,200 in order to transfer the 45 ton payload to the moon? That is the question. Okay, so let's take it outside and see if that'll work out. It is pretty tight as you can see, so we have picked up an appropriate payload. Alright, so I'm just going to manually launch it. Uh, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. I paused right there and I was worried something blew up, as usual. So this is by way of, I guess, celebrating the rollout of the first stage and second stage of New Glenn. We got to see them assembled. I don't know if this is what Blue Origin had in mind for a celebration of it, slapping their rocket onto the side of an SLS, but hey, I've done that to many things before, including Starship, so it's fair. I haven't done it with Falcon, but 
that's because it wouldn't lift off. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's probably for the best that we don't try the Falcon. After all, these have seven BE-4s each. Falcon has two. It's not gonna work out. And even on the first launch of Falcon, they slapped SRBs on it to give it a decent thrust to weight ratio. I don't know how steep I need to go with this. It seems like we'll only need maybe 300 meters per second from the EUS, so we don't have to leave a whole lot of time to apoapsis, and I'm going pretty steep right now. We are definitely through max Q. I don't know if there would be any throttle down, but considering our G-forces are fairly limited, I'm guessing no. As you'll see, our velocity when we decouple the boosters won't be too high. I think they'll be easily recoverable and we're probably reserving more propellant than we need for it. Under doing the pitch there. Let's just go back to prograde and that's it for the boosters. About 17 seconds we left there. So yeah, 2,000 meters per second or so. Releasing the fairings. We're not lined up with the moon or anything, or at least I don't think we are. I guess we might as well check. But we're just going to verify that we have enough delta V to get to the moon once we reach orbit. Yeah, we're definitely not lined up or anything like that. But 3,200 would do the trick. I'm pretty sure I had checked the numbers on this EUS because I had planned to... Uh, I think I did use it as a uh, lander for the moon. I forget which variation of that idea I actually did. I'll have to check because I have multiple variations on the actually using EUS as a lander for the moon uh, motif. And I should explore those more. But uh, in order to do that, I had to make sure that the numbers for the EUS were correct. And so, I'm sure I've got those right. The dry masses, the wet masses, the volume, etc. I may we'll need more than expected. I don't, yeah, I don't think we're going to end up with 3,200 in orbit. So, yeah, the problem with New Glenn is the low thrust weight ratio that we get off the pad. Maybe we should underfuel them? Or maybe my trajectory was not ideal as well. Now that I know how this has gone, maybe I can improve on that. But maybe 45 tons is asking for too much in this case too. Okay. So that's the end of that, and separation. Uh, that one always blows up, it's fine. Nozzle extension. Uh, I've got the nozzle extensions. These are actually the B2s instead of C1s, but it shouldn't make too much of a difference for our current test. And in fact, I, we're not going to make orbit with uh, 3,200. We'll see exactly how much we end up with. But we also have extra time to wapoapsis, so that's not great. Well, we're in orbit with 2,941. We're a little bit high because I overshot. I reserved too much time to apoapsis for it. And so we can fix that a little bit, but that's not going to get us quite enough. Uh, let me see. I still want to try and get 45 tons to orbit with this. And here the EUS is very efficient, of course, because we're not using much of it to make orbit. So we could underfuel the boosters. I mean, when you look at it, they're 1.1 kilotons apiece compared to like 5 to 600 tons for the SLS regular boosters. So that's why it's got such a low thrust weight ratio initially, and it's probably hampering us. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it down to 90%, and then we'll separate them off at 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, I'm going to actually type in the numbers here so that the launch clouds don't refuel them. Okay, so now we've got less. I don't know if we need to reserve as much as I was planning on. So 1.22, I mean, it's not a great benefit right now, but you know, every little bit counts. Um, maybe we can reserve 16 seconds, so 2 minutes and 42 seconds. 
And I'll try a shallower trajectory this time too. Okay, here we go again. SAS on, Thrall is up, ignition. And launch. That pause, okay. Some days it pauses, other days it doesn't. I should note that in making the EUS numbers a little bit more accurate uh, for my own purposes, uh, I did change the numbers of Sobol's uh, RO configurations. Uh, so these are not exactly as Sobol had them on the original mod. I used a document by Boeing, so I'm pretty sure I've got the numbers right. All right, we are past 30 kilometers and 1,000 meters per second. Okay, that's it for the boosters, 16 seconds. Well, we'll say 15 to 16 seconds left there. I'm using the stage time numbers, not the clock, because the clock sometimes starts early, so just for reference. We might as well dump the payload fairing a little bit earlier too. We can do 100 kilometers instead of 115 like I did last time. Okay, payload fairing set. Seems better. But we'll ha we have to be careful. The one benefit that New Glenn has over, say, a Raptor 9 booster or my Orion carrier plane booster is that it exists, right? I mean, there's no Raptor 9 booster, and there's no Orion carrier plane in real life, so... And realistically slapping, like, super heavy on the side of SLS, which I've done, is probably not doable. But the thrust of the New Glenn is just about right to match the thrust of the SLS's regular boosters, so the mounting points should be able to bear that kind of stress theory. I don't know if New Glenn can bear that kind of stress, but probably. Given its, you know, return for landing configuration and everything. I might be too shallow this time, we'll see. Well, Tantu Apoapsis is halted and now going up, so okay. We didn't need that much time out of the EUS. Starship, of course, was another option, and I've done that before, too. Starship with nine engines is sort of like a Raptor 9 configuration, but it has the inefficiency of the vacuum engines unless we take off the vacuum engines and just have nine Raptor engines at the bottom. Nine sea level Raptor engines, I mean. Well, again, looking better, but is it better enough? Okay, separation and... Okay, we have 3,170 meters per second. We are not lined up with the moon. Let's just plot uh, off-plane moon transfer, which would cost potentially more than a regular one, and see what it would actually cost us. So that's 3,130, uh, but that's a little bit far. Let me just do it legitimately and show us getting there closer. The inclination doesn't matter. We could get closer on inclination as well. That's probably a good enough pass. Uh, well, that's crashing into the surface right there. Pretty much perfect. All right, so there we've got a legit transfer, 3,133. It's cutting a little bit close, but 45 tons to the moon is doable with this configuration, and I'll leave it there and not belabor the point. So there you have it, SLS with new Glenn boosters. Feel free to do with it what you will. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.